welcome to chapter 13, lucky 13, the balance sheet um, of the Modern Business Accounting Principles series. I am Claire, if you've not seen my other videos, and I run Right Accounts, and I thought it would be fun to go through these books from 80-something years ago on accounting and human resources and marketing to see if I could learn anything and I thought it would be great to share those with you too. So the balance sheet, so we're going to dive straight in. So the balance sheet is the most important statement prepared from the accounting records. Its purpose is to show the financial condition of an enterprise on a stated date. There is a continuous flow of transactions affecting the financial status of every going concern. These are so varied in their nature and affect the resources of the business in so many ways that it is necessary to check up on the attained results at certain intervals of time. It is not necessary to stop the operation of the enterprise for this purpose, but it is essential to analyse the results of the transactions, both completed and incompleted, up to a certain date, just the same as though the business had stopped momentarily. The balance sheet represents, in fact, a cross-section view of the concerned financial status, while the profit and loss account or statement gives a history of its operations for a period of time. So what it's trying to say, and this is something that confuses people, a profit and loss is from a date to a date, where a balance sheet is on a date, often the 30th of June, and it's what was the status on the 30th of June? It doesn't reflect what the status was on the 29th of June or on the 1st of July because things will have changed. So you have to approach a balance sheet with the mentality of at that point in time, what was the status of affairs for the finance of the business? If the accountant has analysed every account carefully and has made the adjusting entries necessary, to bring them into accord with the facts, the balance sheet will portray the condition of a concern accurately. It is not always possible, however, to be sure that every adjustment has been made. Furthermore, there are items for which estimates of values must be made. The amount charged for depreciation on buildings and machinery, for example, is based on estimates that may prove later to be incorrect. This means that the balance sheet may not show the exact financial condition but does represent the facts as accurately as it is possible to determine them. So what are the adjustments? Well, we have as one of the early videos, prepayments, accruals and those sort of adjustments to the values of accounts. So if you've prepaid insurance or if you have wages due, those are the sort of adjustments that it means. And then obviously there's some things in a balance sheet that just can't be accurately determined. Um, for example, this that one is depreciation, but the value of a building. So if a company owns a building or has a mortgage on a building, what's the exact value of that building? If you're not going to have the answer to that until you sell the building, even an appraisal is still an estimate. It's only what someone is willing to pay in an exchange. So you always have these estimates in a balance sheet so it's never actually going to be exact but what I'm going to say before we continue is that for many small particularly handmade businesses balance sheets are generally fairly empty we don't really have assets because we don't really operate um, credit accounts with customers we don't really have um, assets in terms of equipment, buildings, that sort of thing, because the, the threshold from the tax office, we can actually do the immediate write-off. We don't often need to depreciate assets. You can't have an intangible asset that you created, so your brand may be worth something, but you can't actually add that to your balance sheet. And then on the liability side, I don't often see these types of businesses with loans and they don't often operate with credit from suppliers, that sort of thing. So then really the balance sheet can be limited in use for a very small sole trader business, um, but it will show you proprietorship, ownership, equity, whatever you would like to call it, and retained profits. So it's always a fun place to look to see your retained profits. So. 
It is important in interpreting balance sheets to recognize these limitations. Um, we shall uh, have occasion to examine some of the problems confronting the accountant in her efforts to obtain the information needed to prepare an accurate representation of the financial condition of the firm. And that's probably not something any non-accountants will be interested in. But So what is the balance sheet? So the balance sheet balances are carried forward after the accounts are closed. Uh, what remains are the balance sheet items. So a list of debit and credit balances. Um, so what's closed with profit and loss accounts um, produced should be closed before creating a balance sheet. Now you can actually create a balance sheet at any point in time. You can go into your accounting software, bookkeeping software, you can click balance sheet, uh, report, you pick a date, you can pick any date. Um, but you've got to remember that your estimates for values and items are not going to be updated. Your inventory is not going to be updated, your adjustments, prepayments, accrual are not going to be adjusted. So it is best to stick to balance sheet reporting at the end of a period when the adjustments and closing have occurred. So the balance sheet is prepared directly from the opening account balances and arranged in a conventional format with assets and liabilities. This, uh, I enjoyed this part. So it is merely a matter of historical interest to review the ancient practice by which the balance sheet was evolved out of unnecessary transfers of ledger balances through a balance account until the balance sheet itself was regarded as an account. The balance sheet is not an account, it's a report. Um, just it's funny how the book deals with it. The words to and by and abbreviations DR and CR, debit and credit, always appeared in early balance sheet and survive even to this day in bank balance sheets. Not just bank balance sheets, but actually in your bank statement, you'll see debit and credit. And they're reversed of how you would treat them in your uh, bookkeeping. So a debit in your bookkeeping is actually a credit in the bank because it's from their perspective. So it's the bank's debit and the bank's credit, not your debit and your credit, even though it's your account. So although balance sheet is not an account, it will present a clearer conception of the position to business women if the names of the accounts appear on the same sides as they appear on the ledger. Uh, that gets into this technical discussion around whether they should be on the left or the right and in the US they were doing one thing, in Australia and England they were doing something else but to be honest that has been almost dispensed with because we now use the report format not the debit, credit, left side, right side format and um, internationalization is one of the principles of uh, accounting as I said in the last video so making things comparable and standard particularly across um, regions for multinational businesses, is actually really important. So it is well understood that the term assets, so that's the first thing you're going to see on a balance sheet is assets, includes all available property and rights which can be applied in satisfaction of liabilities or which can be turned into money or money's worth. Ooh. So what's an asset? Well, an asset is all property and rights um, which can be used to satisfy liabilities or can be turned into money or money equivalents. It is also realised that liabilities embrace the proprietor's interest in the business or the shareholders funds including reserves. So liabilities are not just to external companies, external parties, but also to the owners of the business. Um, so on the asset side I listed all the asset items in the possession of the concern while the liabilities list the claims on the business or equities in the assets including proprietors capital. The totals are equal as they naturally must be. So what does it naturally must be? Well the point of accounting is that your business is the value of assets less liabilities and anything remaining is owner's equity and there should always be something remaining no business should be running without any capital uh, that's not a business that's a bankruptcy situation 
It is possible to gain a general impression of the financial status of the concern and the types of property in which its resources have been invested. It is difficult, however, to make certain significant comparisons, and these can be more easily listed, uh, shown by listing items in groupings. So you can just have um, a report that just lists every account with a balance in it. That would be a balance sheet. But it's more helpful to see those in these groupings that you probably, if you've ever looked at a balance sheet, will have seen. So current assets and liabilities, current assets generally come up first. These include cash and the items which, in the normal operation of business, will be converted into cash in a fairly short period. So that includes stocking, trade, goods on hand, ready for sale, um, bills receivable and any accrued interest, and any debtors, so people that owe money to the business. They're all um, current assets. You expect those to be converted um, in a short period. On the other side are current liabilities, which will mature and must be paid within a short period of time. And these would include bills payable, uh, creditors and salaries and any accrued interest on bills. So that's one of the one of the quick tests that accountants do to, to test how liquid businesses is comparing their current assets and their current liabilities because it will show you how well placed a business is to be able to pay what they owe to others. And there are ratios around this. It's got to be more than one, else the business is not really financially viable, up to two. But it will really depend on what industry you're in and what um, conditions you operate under. But then we move into fixed or non-current, as we would call them, non-current assets and non-current liabilities. But it's important to note the distinction between fixed and current assets is made on an arbitrary basis. There is no question but that a building which will last for 20 years or more is a fixed or non-current asset. But a question might arise as to some forms of equipment or tools that are consumed within shorter periods of time. The usual practice is to consider any item that will not be realised upon or consumed within the period of one year as a fixed or non-current asset. Likewise, liabilities which will not fall due within a year are called uh, non-current liabilities. It actually says fixed or deferred. So then the last section you're going to see on a balance sheet is the capital items. So remember we call capital, uh, owner's equity, equity, proprietorship, uh, ownership. So the capital account and reserves, so reserves are what have been retained in the business, are listed under the heading of capital items. In a partnership, the proprietorship accounts of the several partners would be included in the classification. A company's balance sheet would have accounts for share capital, reserves and undistributed profits representing the equity of the shareholders. So. It's interesting that a balance sheet cannot be read intelligently by one who is not familiar with business terms. It is necessary to have some notion as to the general nature of the business under consideration. One balance sheet of a business enterprise taken by itself would not convey a great deal of information if a person did not have something with which to compare it. So individually balance sheets that it says actually aren't that useful. What's changed? Is this like you might be able to make an analysis on is this good or bad, but that's based on benchmarks from other balance sheets. So if you just took a balance sheet, you'd never seen a balance sheet before, you really would be at a bit of a loss as to what you were supposed to do with it. And then just in summary, after some very complicated examples, um it reminds us that a balance sheet shows the condition of a business on a stated date, but it does not reveal any information concerning the changes that have taken place during an accounting period. The profit and loss statement gives a history of the changes affecting the capital and reserves. So, in summary, after we do see a kind of a more report version there with starting for some reason with liabilities and then going on to assets after which is not normally the format we would use 
um, in the 21st century, we normally would put assets first. So the analyses of the balance sheet statements in this chapter have been given for the purpose of showing the importance of this form of accounting report. It is the basis of the whole structure of accounting records. The technique of the double entry system is based upon the balance sheet. All the ledger accounts are reflected in this statement and their transactions are analysed in light of their effect upon the balance sheet classification. After all, the adjusting and closing entries have been recorded. The accounts contain strictly balance sheet data. So the routine of recording accounting data has been described in earlier chapters and methods of preparing the statements have been explained. This completes the discussion of the fundamental principle underlying all accounting methods. There are a great many questions of analysis, however, which should be considered in applying these principles to specific cases. These are, for the most part, questions of refinement and theory. They should not cause any particular difficulty if the fundamental principles are constantly kept in mind. The remaining chapters of the text are concerned with the special questions and problems which arise in practice. So that's the end of the, the standard. Um, we get into depreciation, appreciation, um, deferrals and all sorts of fun stuff, proprietorship, constructive accounting and there's even a chapter on labour saving devices where accounting was becoming less labour intensive and more automated which is the privileges we enjoy today in 2019. If you have enjoyed this video please like, comment or subscribe to my channel and I will be back next week for chapter 14 Provision of depreciation and other reserves sounds fascinating. Um, I actually think it really will be a good explanation around depreciation and then what depreciation is and how you would approach depreciation if that's appropriate for your business. I'll see you next week.